Hey everyone, welcome to my December 2020 beauty favorites and fails. Now I titled this video Monthly Beauty Favorites and an Epic Fail, at least I think that's what I'm going to title this video, knowing full well that Epic Fail is not a term that's used a lot these days. I think we used it back in the 90s when I was in high school, but I could not really think of any other way to more appropriately describe how I feel about the fail this month. I actually have two fails, but only one of them I'm classifying as an epic fail. And for those of you that consistently watch all of my videos, which I thank you very much for, you already know what that product is. But as always, I'm going to start with the good stuff, which is what I have on my face right now. I always try to wear my favorite products on my face when I do these videos so that you can see what they look like. And the first product is this Huda Beauty Faux Filter Foundation Stick. I have never been a fan of the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Liquid Foundation, even though I am a predominantly liquid foundation wearer. I don't really use cream foundations. I don't really use powder foundations. And I don't usually wear stick foundations. They have never really worked for me because I have such oily skin. I need something that's really, really long wearing. And in the past, most stick foundations just wore off way too quickly. And I just, I just never liked them. Let's just put it in layman's terms. I never liked stick foundations. When I saw the reviews, when I read the reviews of this foundation on Sephora.com, I thought, why not? Let's just give it a try. It's been a while since I've tested a stick foundation. Long story short, this is the best stick foundation I've tried. I feel like the reviews are correct. It gives a really nice medium coverage. It looks natural. It's long wearing, although I do have to admit that I've been setting my foundation every day with my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Filter Setting Spray. It's my favorite. It keeps everything on. I did a full demo and wear test of this foundation in my mini Sephora haul video I posted a couple of weeks ago. So you can check out that video if you'd like to see this applied to my face and after it's been worn for several hours. So my next four favorites are all from the video I did where I tested out products that luxury beauty YouTuber Michelle Wong had recommended for me. And I tried out a lot of great stuff. I really truly love everything and I really love how that look came out. But these four products are the stands out ones for me. These are the ones that I find myself reaching for just over and over and over. I am so happy she recommended them to me. They've all been on my radar. I just never went for it and purchased. And now I am just loving them. The first one is the Chantecaille Loose Powder. Last month, I did a full face of Chanel and I tested out, I purchased and tried out the Chanel Loose Powder. And I believe I had it in my November favorites video. So you might be thinking, well, okay, that one was your favorite last month and this one is your favorite this month, so which one is it? Which one do I prefer over the other? And that's really tough to answer because I think they're both amazing. I think they both give a really flawless airbrushed look to the skin. I know I always use those same adjectives when I'm describing loose powders. But that's what you want a loose powder to do. Am I wrong? You want it to make your face look flawless and keep your makeup on all day, keep it maybe from getting shiny. Now, neither of these two powders I find to be very shine controlling, but they are very smoothing and perfecting. The difference between the Chantecaille and the Chanel, and the reason why Michelle recommended that I try the Chantecaille, is that this one is talc free. And I know that's really important to a lot of you. So if you are looking for a talc free, luxury, whisper light, amazing loose setting powder, you've got to try this one from Chantecaille. 
And now my current favorite concealer is this one from Clay de Poe. If you saw that demo or that tutorial where I tried all that luxury makeup, the coverage on this concealer is so good. It is pricey. It's Clay de Poe. So if you're familiar with Clay de Poe, you know it's not a $20 concealer. To me, this is one of those luxury products that is worth the splurge. It covers my dark circles like no other. It lasts all day. The only downside to this product is that I don't think it comes in enough shades. It really doesn't. It took myself and the sales associate, we had to go through basically every shade. Anyway, they really need a shade expansion. No question about that. And I am wearing the shade Ivory. I use the shade Ivory, but all of these shades will be linked in the description box. The next two luxury products I tried in that video that I am still crazy about. I was crazy about them when I applied them, and I've been using them nearly every day since. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Highlighter in... Actually, it's called the Hollywood Superstar Glow Highlighter. And I truly was not going to purchase this because I have highlighters on my list of things that I am really trying to cut down on purchasing. But it's Charlotte Tilbury. And you know I have zero willpower when it comes to new Charlotte Tilbury products. I tell myself I'm not going to purchase them. I tell myself I don't need them. But then I tell myself I'm a Charlotte Tilbury collector. Oh, it looks so pretty. You know you're gonna love it. <sighs> so that's what happened. Well, actually, Michelle put on her list of products that she wanted me to use for my look, Charlotte Tilbury highlighter. She just didn't specify which one, and I already have the liquid Hollywood Glow highlighter, and I already have the Filmstar Bronze and Glow that has a highlighter in it. This one was the only one I didn't have, so obviously I had to get it. It's simply a stunning highlighter from the packaging to the formula to the beautiful shade. I would call it a mix of champagne and rose gold. And finally from that luxury video is this Gucci lipstick in the shade Blaze of Noon. Um, I don't even know what to say about this lipstick other than it is absolute perfection. As you can see, it's not too pink, it's not too blue-based, it's not too warm, it's not too light. The swatches online do not do it justice. It really is absolutely perfect for anyone that has light to medium skin and wants a pink lipstick or an everyday lipstick that doesn't scream pink. I adore this lipstick on its own, but I also like it topped with a gloss. I can make it more pinky or less pinky depending on the lip liner I use. It does have a little bit of a sheen to it. It's not a shine and it's not a matte lipstick. It's your traditional, old school, creamy lipstick. Before I get into any more of the favorites, let's talk about one of the fails. This is from Juno & Co. It is their Moonshine Miracle Cream. I've been watching a lot of TikTok lately, and there are certain things on TikTok, certain makeup items that go viral, that everyone is talking about. And I actually have one of those items here as a favorite, but this one it didn't go viral recently. It went viral months ago, like I think at the beginning of quarantine, maybe late March, April. This was touted as an all-in-one moisturizer, primer, perfecting face base, perfect for under makeup. But for my skin, it was a disaster. It was way too greasy. It made my makeup slide off. My face was super shiny. Maybe it's good for someone with dry skin or combination skin that's just not quite as oily as I am. But I've worn other pre-makeup heavier types of creams before and I haven't had this problem where my makeup just basically just right off. And not only that, but when it was on, I looked even shinier than I already get throughout the day. So unfortunately, this is a no-go for me. Okay, time for a couple more favorites before we get to the epic fail. Eyeshadow palette favorite. I recently put up my top 
eyeshadow palettes of 2020. I actually put up a bunch of, well, I think it was three best of 2020 videos. I was going to do a skincare video, a best of 2020 skincare video, but being that it was late November and into December that I really started noticing a big change in my skin and falling in love with my routine, that I felt it was better suited for just my December favorites video other than doing a separate best of 2020 skincare because I'm gonna show you momentarily the products that I feel have just really transformed my skin in the last six to eight weeks. So I'll move on to those skincare items after I talk about this eyeshadow palette from Huda Beauty. This is the Naughty palette. This was also featured in the same video where I featured the Huda Beauty foundation stick. It was that mini Sephora haul. That little haul was products that I had been wanting to try since they were released, but for some reason or another held off. And then when I had a promo code to use, I added them to my basket and purchased them. And this was one of those items. And I'm really, really happy with this palette. And just as with the foundation, if you'd like to hear a more in-depth review of this palette, please check out that haul video. This palette is just so good. And had I done a top 15 eyeshadow palettes of 2020 instead of a top 10 eyeshadow palettes of 2020 video, this would have been in there. Even though I purchased it in early December, it would have had to make the cut because I just love it. The mattes are really, really rich in pigment. They're buttery, they're blendable. I don't get a ton of fallout with them. And the shimmers are so unique and they are so vibrant. You don't need to use them damp. You can just run your finger in the palette and pat it on your lid and bam, you get all that beautiful shimmer and sparkle. This is gonna be the palette that I reach for a lot when I want to do fun nighttime looks or even fun sparkly daytime looks. Okay, I promised I would talk about the skincare next. And these three items are my new holy grails. For makeup removal, I've been using this Elemis Pro Collagen Cleansing Balm. I love the way it feels. I love the way it removes all of my makeup so easily and afterwards my skin feels so clean, yet still very hydrated. A lot of cleansing balms or makeup removing cleansers in general will make my face feel stripped of all of its natural oils and I just need to slather on the moisturizer afterwards, but not with this balm. You guys know I'm always honest with you about prices and this one, Elemis as a whole, is quite pricey. That said, if this cleansing balm is just not in your budget, I would definitely recommend either the Physician's Formula Matcha Cleansing Balm. I love that one too. Or if you prefer a foaming makeup removing cleanser, the one from Wander Beauty that I will link in the description box is fantastic too. I use that a lot as well. But this has been my go-to cleanser. The Elemis Pro Collagen Marine Cream has been my go-to daytime moisturizer. The feel of this moisturizer is just like no other that I've ever used. It has a super cooling, hydrating feel to it. It works beautifully under my makeup, unlike this Juno cream. And I actually love the way this cream smells, but if you are someone who greatly dislikes any sort of scent in your skincare products, and I totally understand if that's you. And if that is the case, but the concept of having a cream that is cooling and gel-like and works really nicely under makeup, I would recommend this one from Belief. It's the True Cream Aqua Balm. I used to use this all the time. In fact, the one I have is pretty much empty. I maybe have one or two more uses. My last skincare favorite is truly the MVP of my routine. It is the Lotion P50 1970, which is made by a company whose name I am about to completely butcher, I'm sure, Biologique Recherche. I'm gonna put the name on the screen. I'm holding up the large 8.4 ounce bottle, but I started off by using this 1.7 ounce bottle. I actually purchased this two and a half years ago on a trip to New York. I had read about it in magazines and heard about it on social media, on blogs, 
apparently all the high society ladies in New York said that this was a transformative product, that it made their skin look younger and fresher, and it was like getting a professional peel at home. So naturally, I wanted to try it. And as far as I know, the only place where you can purchase a guaranteed authentic bottle of this product is at the Rescue Spa in Manhattan. So I went there when I was in New York. I purchased the small bottle. There are two formulas, and the esthetician there told me that this is the one I should get. I'm not sure what the name is of the other one. I believe they're two different strengths. I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a product that I wasn't sure I was going to love, and I had heard that the smell of this product was pretty bad. And it is pretty bad, but I can tolerate it. I don't love it, but you do kind of get used to it. And it does sting when it's first applied, but that sort of thing has never really bothered me. I actually enjoy when a product stings because in my mind, I feel like it means it's working better. You guys know I am not an esthetician. I've never claimed to be. I'm not even a skincare expert. I just try different things. I let you know what I think really works for me. And this at first did not work for me. I tried it for about two weeks and I really didn't see any results, so I set it aside for two years. And now you're probably wondering, well, Risa, doesn't it go bad? Are you using a bad product? Should you have been using it? Maybe, maybe not, but I did. I started using it and I used it for two weeks straight, almost every night, which I'm pretty sure is not what they want you to do, but Again, my skin I think is pretty tough and the more I used it, the more results I was seeing. Every morning I would wake up and my skin texture was so much better. It felt so much smoother and my pores looked more refined and my viewers were noticing in my videos that my skin just was looking so much better. So I didn't want to run out of this little bottle, so I went ahead and ordered from the Rescue Spot in Manhattan the full-size bottle. So consider me a member of the Lotion P50 1970 cult. They call it a cult classic, and now I'm in the cult because I cannot be without this. In December, I also uploaded a video of my top 10 favorite blushes of all time. And several people asked why I didn't include the e.l.f. primer infused blushes because I have tried them in the past and I did talk about how much I really liked them. And it got me thinking, hmm, they're right. Why didn't I include any of these blushes in that video because this shade in particular called Always Punchy, which is the one I have on right now, is so good. This is a dupe in my mind to one of my favorite higher end blushes from the brand Lawless called Soft Nectar. It's a perfect peachy pink and it packs a punch. Hence, probably why they call this one Always Punchy. And my final favorite is a product that has gone viral recently on TikTok. They are the NYX Shine Loud Duo Lipstick Lip Gloss. Actually, it's a liquid lipstick on one side and then a gloss on the other. They're very similar to the Chanel Rouge Duos that I'm often raving about here on my channel. Just like you do with the Chanel, you apply the liquid lip color first, you let it dry for about a minute or so, 90 seconds is even better, and then you apply the glossy top coat. And then you wait another 60 seconds and it will not come off on your glass if you're drinking, it won't come off on your mask. And these truly work just as well as the Chanel. These really do deserve the hype and the praise that they're getting on social media. They have become very difficult to find. I guess they're sold out on Ulta. I don't know exactly when I'm putting up this video, but when I checked yesterday, most of the good colors, I haven't tried obviously all the colors, so I don't know which ones are really good or not good, but typically most people go for the neutral 
nudes or pinky nudes or pinky peaches or mauvey pinks and all of those colors were sold out. I'm gonna swatch the two that I have for you so you can see. One of them is called Cash Flow, and the second color is called Born to Hustle. To be completely honest with you, the liquid lipstick formula is not quite as nice as the Chanel. It is a little bit more drying, but I find it to be pretty comfortable once the gloss is applied. The other difference is that these have a tendency to stain more so than the Chanel. The NYX Shine Loud is, to me, more difficult to remove than the Chanel. And you knew I was gonna make you wait until the end of the video to talk about the fail because that's the way we do things here on YouTube. We need our watch time to be high so our videos get pushed out more. So hopefully you've stayed since the beginning to hear about the failure that was these Wet n Wild Color Icon eyeshadow palettes. These are a new launch from Wet n Wild. I have an entire video dedicated to my try-on of three of these palettes. I tried on four. I will link the video in the description box because I'm not going to talk too much about why these were an epic fail because it's very clear in that video. But just to summarize and put it bluntly, they're not good. When I tried these eyeshadows, I just found them to be very sheer, patchy, difficult to work with, both the shimmers and the mattes. They just weren't good quality. And one person said that they purchased one of these palettes and that they actually liked them. They actually thought the mattes were pigmented and that perhaps I got a bad batch. I don't think so. I mean, maybe, but another YouTuber who does a lot of drugstore product testing, she had the exact same experience that I did. So I honestly had high hopes for these because I have tried other Wet n Wild eyeshadows in the past that I thought were really, really good. And I've tried other Wet n Wild products in general that I thought were really good. So the palettes looked beautiful online in photos. And to be fair, there have been a lot of really affordable drugstore eyeshadow palette releases that I've been completely impressed with, such as the e.l.f. 4 pan palettes, such as the BH Cosmetics 16 pan palettes. You can find affordable, high quality eyeshadows out there, but these are not it, in my opinion, of course. I just thought that these were some of the worst I hate saying this because I hate being so negative, but my channel has viewers of all income levels. Everyone who watches my channel has a different budget, which is why I try to do as often as possible a combination or keep a nice balance of high-end luxury and affordable makeup. And that said, no matter what the price point, I don't want anyone wasting their money, whether it's $6 or $100. I don't want any of you wasting your hard-earned money on a product that just isn't worth it. The end of another monthly favorites and fails, my last one for 2020, although this video is going live in 2021, I wanna wish all of you a very happy new year and thank you so much for your support in 2020. It means the world to me. I hope that you'll stick around to see what I have for you in 2021. And I wish all of you just so much health and happiness and good fortune and everything positive because I just appreciate you all and love you all so much. And I'm gonna start tearing up and I hate when that happens. So why don't I just close this out by saying thank you so much for watching. And if you aren't already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter and TikTok under the same username, Risa Does Makeup. So yeah, that'll do it for this one. I look forward to seeing you in my next video.